All right. This is episode seven of Super Geeks. I can't believe it's been seven friggin' weeks. Can you guys? Sure. No. Well, I... I've only been on two, so it's fine with me. True. <laughs> I made a big mistake in the first when I first uploaded the last episode. I accidentally put it was I thought it was, for some reason that was episode seven, and then when I edited it later, every time I share the link, it still misreads it as episode seven. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to. You know, fix that. It's weird. So it looks weird because when people are going to look for the episode, you know, if they even care, um, then it's going to show like episode seven. And then it says, and then when you go to it, it says episode six. And now this time it's going to say episode seven. So hopefully I will. Well, just call this one episode seven A. We officially weird. have as many episodes as there have been Star Wars movies. Or 7.5. There you go. But there have been eight true. Star Wars movies. And Rogue One's coming out, so that's kind of it. Doesn't it's not one of the numbered ones, but it's still, you know, there's a lot of good stuff. That might be actually a more interesting one for me, though. You know, I made I made a decision after I had such a fun time talking Star Wars with John, when John's back, and when we had that conversation about the whole and Anthony brought up the whole Jedi, what makes it a Jedi Master and all that. I said to myself, self, I really did. I looked in the mirror and said, self. Um, he said, self. I did. <laughs> I, did. I said, self, because people, you know, say to themselves. Um, I don't. <laughs> I'm weird like that. But um, I, I feel Star Wars... I've never had uh, been on a podcast that actually had a reason to talk about Star Wars. It just was never one of the uh, categories that people wanted to talk about. And I started... The more we started talking, I realized, no, nah, screw this. I'm modifying the show. Uh, you know, it's super geeks, and the primary thing is about superhero stuff. But I think Star Wars... I don't want to just make a new podcast about Star Wars and, and split up my attention. I think it's just something that should be added into the conversation every once in a while. Because it's, well, that you know, could be. I mean, you could you could introduce our Jedi superheroes. I mean, that's a topic you talk about later. That's a good point. I'm, I'll, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm open minded. But yeah, let's talk more about some of the trivia and how things work. And... and there's so much going on with Star Wars, just like there is with the superhero genre. I mean, Marvel owns a lot of the property of both genres that are doing well right now um as a matter of fact um one of the things i was going to mention too uh is that i'm in the middle of making a I, i've been working on a batman graphic novel for a while now and it's called it's i'm just going to talk about it real quick um the title i, I came up with it over the summer the title is called the darkness war brings it's the first of three parts and uh you know i do 3d art and 3d stuff for starfinder and i've just i, I make comics and this one is I get because I, I get a lot of my assets from John's site, which is called Vanishing Point dot Biz, right, John? Mm -hmm, that's right. And there's free stuff there. And speaking of Star Wars, holy crap, they've got tons of awesome free stuff that you can get there, like Stormtrooper armor, Adat walkers, the Millennium Falcon itself is a model you can get there. Uh, there's just tons of Star Star Wars, Star Trek. Military and stuff. And also trying to start on the Force Awakens. We've got BB-8. Uh, yeah, I have a. I, I like and... that black version of him. That sounded weird. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we made a couple of different color options for it. Do they ever saw? I mean, when I was when Star Wars the first three, the originals, Episode four, five, and six came out, they used to sell. You know how you could buy model ships and model planes and that stuff. And you put them together. Yeah. They sold a model Death Star that I put together. Yes. Painted it and it looked great. Do they sell those things or did they come pre-made now because people are so damn lazy? No, they they still sell them. Oh, okay. You they, can yeah, they you, it's difficult to find. Sometimes you got to go to to hobby stores or directly through their website. I forget the name of the company. I'll have to look out if uh, Marvin didn't get it to me before I do. Well, I was thinking because of the ADD society that we have today, people <laughs> wouldn't have the patience to put these things together anymore because it takes like two or three days if you want to do it right. If you're you into talking, it, you'll focus. Are you talking <laughs> about the, um, the the just the hobby models? Or are you talking about the the, uh, the no the, the models? I mean, the, you know, because you used to make the ships. I mean, plane everything that you could get, but they made them for Star Wars. You could buy this, this the um, I mean, Star Trek. I did a I did a uh, an Enterprise one too, but you could. I bought the uh, the Death Star, and then I bought a uh, smaller Star Destroyer. You know, and you Stay could put them target. together, and you right. painted it that, black. That was and it, the, the 
place that for the action figures. No, they weren't play sets. They were models. I mean, they were actually just... Oh, plastic models? Yeah, the, you, just, you know how you can put... You, it comes in together. they got those little plastic sheets and the pre-printed. You push them out. It says A1 and you point oh, to A2 right, and stuff right. like that. Oh, right, right. Yeah. That, that's what I'm talking about. You, you actually put the model together yourself. You spend two or three days. You paint you everything first. It, and you glue yeah. them together bit by bit and you slowly build it up and it becomes the model. It come, becomes the actual ship itself. I, huh. I'm thinking that people don't have the patience today because I see they're all um, on their phones. They wouldn't have the patience to do this for because they, everything's still, immediate. They want that immediate response. I think it depends. I think it depends on how you're brought up. There's still a lot of people I know that do stuff like that the old-fashioned way. I, I'd like that then, yeah. Yeah, there, I think there's a company called Polar Lights that still makes plastic models where you need the paint and the glue. Yeah, there's that's a lot good, of options. That, 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 is that what you mean? Or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly where you – you like Hobby Lobby. Like you said, you can buy those models. I mean, you can buy models for everything now. But it's become a niche market. But right. back in the yeah. 80s, this was – It's always this, been niche. Well, yeah, but I mean it was more uh, more mainstream with kids because you didn't have the internet. You didn't have the computer games that we do today. You there are still have... parents out there though that encourage their kids to get out in the real world. You know what I mean? It also depends. It just, right, like I said, but I mean, every, but today's society, there's more things to do. There's internet. There's uh, the the, uh, the online gaming. There's the phones. There's the stuff that they can do. There's much more. I mean, <laughs> when I was a kid, you either outside playing or you're inside. I mean, we had like the Commodore 64, the 128, the 286. Yeah, I remember those days. But but those things were slow. I mean, the video games were pretty okay you play them for a couple of hours and then you get bored and you do something else the the the, the models were things that you could do again you put you do for an hour or two and then you put it away and then you bring it back out and you'd work on it a little bit more and, and, and more thing and, and after you two or three days or a week or you'd something. have a model you'd have the yeah. actual ship itself that'd be interesting i think you're and, selling people short i think the sort of thing still exists in families all over but it's it not something you'd see apparently by walking down the street. Oh, I agree. I agree. But the thing is, they were the mainstream when I was when Star Wars was coming. I said, "What? They, oh, yeah, you could buy that. You can buy the little the little figures and so forth, right?" But now there's so much more marketing. There's so much more pre-made stuff. There's Lego stuff that you can get, and you know, I'd love to get one of those Legos where you can actually make the Death Star out of the Lego. I never did that. Oh, that thing's that three thousand dollars. <laughs> I know. But that's what I'm saying. It's three thousand dollars. I, like, and... I couldn't afford that. But it was cool that they could actually do that. Lego has become so creative with all the different blocks you can get. You can make any kind of Eiffel Towers and stuff like that. I mean, when I was a kid, Legos were just came in like blocks of 64 or 100 and something, and you could build a house. You could build, you know, you couldn't build much out of it. Right, yeah, they have the preset. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right, interesting. I mean, actually, I heard that getting those licenses is what saved Lego, going from just selling blocks to making pre made kits. I mean, and when you can have, have Batman, Star Wars, and Indiana Jones, yep. and DC, and Marvel, and yeah, and you yeah, can so have... I, I, yeah, it's like they they tie in. So you got the the, the the people that can make the models, they're pre-made. You can buy them, or you can make them where you make them yourself, or you can buy the Lego kits, or you can buy the little dolls or the little uh, figurines or the the things that people like. They keep them in their plastic because they want to retain their value, thinking that they're going to be worth something or sell them on in 10, eBay. 20 years, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Actually, you know what? That's where you should look. Go on eBay, see if they have that stuff. You're probably right. It probably does have an eBay. Um, I, I just did a search. There are a couple eBay links as well as a few companies that come up right away. It does surprise cool. me. That's cool. I, I, so I'm, I'm just glad that they still do that. I'm just glad because they – to me, that's what when I was a kid with Star Wars, that's what the big thing was. I thought they moved away from it and towards more, you know, traditional toys, if you will. The immediate be, response of building things and kids getting to play with them right out of the store. I would be actually which curious. Is fine. If they, you know, with the modern three D printer technology, I'd be curious if people are using that in some way to help. Maybe you print it and then you model it and then you paint it, or you know what I mean. Like you print the parts for the Falcon bit by bit. And then you assemble it. Maybe there's a way they can con- kind of con- con- converge the I just two saw, hobbies. Again, I don't have the link with it. I just saw something where you can make your phone a 3D printer. You buy this little kit, and because it got the light source from the, the from, your, from your your phone, you put this thing right over the top of it. You pour your gel in, and it will model something right on your phone. Doesn't Small, shock me. But- yeah, <laughs> You're gonna make wow. 3D printers out of phones now. I mean, you can just have 3D printers. I mean, 3D in printers your house. are basically like Star Trek's replicators in in the right. early early. I have, so a, I have a 3D printer. Oh, oh yeah, man. that's right. You do. 
But didn't you didn't you tell me that it didn't work as well as it was supposed to? It didn't work out of the box. I'm waiting on the replacement to get here. It's it's been a little while. You spent a lot of money on it. Oh, you, you didn't say how much. You bought it and you couldn't yes, play I with did. it. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I got a MakerBot fifth generation replicator. Is what it's called. And <laughs> MakerBot's a pretty good company, but I got I got into uh, I got I got it from them as they're transitioning from a do it yourself kind of community to a more corporate and public appliance type uh. marketing. So it, it's I, I'm caught right in the middle of that transition and they're still ironing out all the details and how they sell and market these things. Uh, I, I just realized I didn't introduce everybody because we jumped into a subject that just kind of came <laughs> naturally. Uh, so I'm George chooch 99 a is my Twitter. Um, and it, starting from the top, we have Anthony. Where can people find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Battles. If you choose to, although I don't think a lot of people no, can. Um, Will, what about you? You can find me on Twitter at uh, Intrinsicus. That's intrinsic with a U.S. on the end. And Ross? People can find me on Twitter at Subsailor688. And John? Yep, I'm John. You can find me at vanishingpoint.biz. That's B-I-Z. Like George was saying, all kinds of digital models for graphic novels and animations. Yep, I like some of the stuff people have posted up there on your site um, that are um, just – there are projects that they did for like school or just businesses, just example things. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on that site. Um, I'll post a link in, uh, in when we post the episode too uh, for people interested in checking it out. So there's a lot, this has been an incredible – it's almost overwhelming. This has been one of the best weeks for TV – when it comes to heroes and, and Star Wars and all kinds of stuff, so we're, we pick, I picked a few topics that are the I say the best of the best of this week. Um, everybody's been waiting for the Flash Supergirl crossover, and not only was it aired, it was better than I thought it would be. What did you think, Ross? And I know uh, Will, you watched it too, right? Yeah, I did. What did you think, Ross? I watched was... it as well. Oh, you know, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I forgot you watched it. I love how everyone forgets me. Sure, uh, we, no yeah, you forget about me. Well, why, why don't we go around and see what everyone thought of it? Yeah, Anthony, let's yeah, start with you. You're at the top. What did you think? No, let's go with Ross. You asked him first. All right. This was actually my first exposure to both Supergirl and The Flash. So I was actually pretty happy with it. It, uh, it, it felt a little campy at times. A couple times, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, since I haven't seen some of the previous episodes, the ease at which one character kind of slipped into the supervillain super villain role, just kind of at the snap of a finger, seemed a little odd to me. But it actually liked... has been building up, just so you know. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, about. it's like I said, first in, first experience. But I liked the chemistry that uh, Fla or that Barry and Kara had. Yeah, their their ease at which they kind of fell into this. Hey, it's a superhero team up. Let's have fun with it. Uh, she was adorable, I think. Absolutely adorable. The actress gets better. They had great chemistry, like you said. What did you think, uh, Anthony? Well, I, I did like the uh, the fact that she was using her leverage with uh, Flash to get uh, James Olsen uh, jealous. Jealous. Yeah, that, that was too. awesome. And then, you know, Cat Grant was helping her out as well. That was awesome. And, you know, <laughs> Cat Grant is a bitch. So, uh, am I allowed oh. to say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You okay. Can say that. Yeah, so she's a female dog in this movie, but she was saying to you know to uh, to Kara, hey, I would I would pretend like I'm not interested and use your friend new friend to get James Olsen jealous and sure as stuff he got jealous. I loved and, it. And, and Kara didn't even realize that she was doing what Cat advised her until it was like, oh yeah yeah, maybe I am doing that. Was he jealous? You know, it was it was just cool. Um, I agree with you there. I um the thing the thing also is that there's a lot of people. This is what's interesting. There's people who Flash is a hit show, and there's a lot of people who are still waiting, like yourself, to catch up with the show. And there's people that started with Supergirl, or I'm sorry, the other way around, that watch Flash, but they haven't seen Supergirl. So the, what I love about this crossover is, and and I've seen comments all over the web that suggest this is going to be great for both shows. It's it's people are tuning into Supergirl for this episode. If they've never seen it, because Flash is on it, and and then the opposite, 
too. So I think the ratings on both shows are going to end up being really good. Um, and I think that it's going to make people want to go check out The Flash. And for, you know, and then people are going to want to check out Supergirl. And I just think it's a win-win for everybody involved. And it felt like, we talked about this on the show, actually since the first episode, about how a good crossover is, it basically makes you smile. It makes you say, you, it makes you feel like it's special when, some, when the characters interact. Uh, like with Arrow and Flash, and the Bionic Man and the Bionic Woman, Xena and Hercules. Tons of examples. I totally couldn't believe how natural it felt when they when they got together and what i like about it too is they use the multiple earths uh trope some people were complaining that like oh like when star trek does it like it doesn't it's 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 lazy writing it's in this case it worked because dc has always had the multiverse as part of its lore and i like how quickly barry explained the multiverse to james and to win and by the way that bromance between win and barry we could talk about that for a while too that was awesome <laughs> he's like and i try and travel by accident once and he's like that's cool and he was just win was so starstruck by barry like from the moment he figured out who he was and it was just it was just really nice and they he quickly explained with a with a whiteboard what's going on with the multiverse so anyone who's never watched the flash within about five minutes they used they used exposition to ex- to catch people up on why he's there what the multiverse is, and they did it in a cutesy way that I think the writers really needed a, a, a standing ovation. To be able to do that without it, making it seem like a cheap gimmick, what do you think, Will? Well, let me first say that I love the casting of the, the Flash and Supergirl. They, they, they got their casting spot on with those two actors Absolutely. and actresses, right? But the, the – and this, this crossover, the, the, like, a, like uh, Ross said, the interaction between those two was perfect. But I thought the adorable. story was a little rushed. The, the story was a little rushed. Yeah. The the way the way that he was introduced, the way that all of a sudden there's the ba- the way that they introduced Banshee. All of a sudden they've been working up to her. She's she she just we just found out that she's the evil. She should have become week. Banshee before. But all this of a sudden, Ban, all of a sudden she's got the paint, the face, and all that stuff. There was no there's no backstory to her. They just introduced her with they forced other, it. The, the, the they electric, forced it into this one is. episode. They squeezed it in there. Right. Yeah. I thought that was a little rushed. That's something I got to comment on real quick. Right. Uh, okay. uh, just, go ahead. <laughs> the makeup, the costume, everything else. Right, I'm going to go arching today. I need to prep for four hours first to get my makeup right. She looked awesome, though. You have to admit. Right, but I mean, she just came out. She just shows up, you know, while Live Wire was there. And all of a sudden, we got to get you right. And all of a sudden, the next we see her, she's got the makeup on. She looks like a skeleton or something. I'm like, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the comics. It probably looks right, but. I'm she like, looks what, perfect. Why, why did she. What, 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 what was the transition to her becoming that? Well, in the comics, I mean, it wasn't makeup. And 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 uh, I will say right. one thing. So if it wire, wasn't makeup, that's what she looked like. Really, why didn't yeah. they do it naturally? Why didn't she just slowly, after she would fought with Supergirl and the Flash, get electrocuted by Livewire and turn into some kind of skeleton? I hated Livewire. The one thing I have a problem with, I love the character of Livewire. As I don't she like is the in actress. The, only the average. Uh, well, in the in the animated series for Batman or uh, Superman, I'm sorry, Lori Petty from Tank Girl played or did the voice for Livewire, and she was much better in the cartoon. The problem I have with this live wire is that wig is horrible. It just looks yeah, so stupid on her. That's thing, yeah. The white hair. I like, Every time I look, look at natural. her on screen, it makes me like want to roll my eyes because if they had right. just dyed her hair or done something, but it looks so but the, much like a wig. But know? also, the interaction between live wire and Cat, that's perfect. I love I love how yeah. she's doing that. She's a, she's a great character on that show. But the interaction between those two is like, ugh, I don't get it. I'm just, I'm not feeling the, the interaction between them. But as far as this episode, I think it was a little rushed which is fine. I mean, they're trying to introduce, get some uh, feedback for Supergirl and Flash and so forth. And I, I, I guess they couldn't bring all of the cast over from Flash to this one because, I mean, for you know reasons why, because you're in two networks or whatever. And then again, the, whether they send him back, kind of rushed. You know, all of a sudden they're running and she throws him forward and boom. Usually takes a little longer for them to figure out how to get back to Cute. his present time, right? But and other than but- that, the story, the, the process between, the, the interaction between those two characters... It was perfect. My favorite moment from the episode, and this, I, I have lots of friends that are firefighters, fire, <laughs> chi- fire chiefs. Um, let's talk, you know, re- we have to at least mention this. And it's a little bit of a spoiler for people who haven't seen the episode, but by the time this episode of Super Geeks airs, it'll have been a couple of weeks, so hopefully you'll be all right with this. The The thing that shocked me, 
that they went they went there, which was good, uh, was but surprising. You have two big superheroes meeting and, and, and fighting the bad guys. And who is it that saves the day? The fire department. They kick the bad guy's ass. Not Supergirl and not The Flash. The well, I understand why they did it. Because Super well, uh, is they were just uh, paying it forward after Supergirl saved the fire department. Right. That's right. all that was. But, was but also, cool. you have to realize that Supergirl had gone bad a couple episodes ago, and she's trying to repay right. it. She saved somebody. Now she's back in good with the people of their city, so now it's all That right. was a little bit of a quick fix that I would... I get it. It's a quick fix. They kind of rushed the whole thing. But again, you can understand why they needed. she needed to get back in good with the city. The it citizens. was a little bit forced, but at the same time, it did make sense. They saw her trying to save the helicopter and the people. Well, uh, what were you going to say, Megan? Yeah, am I the only one that noticed that Supergirl raced the Flash and it was basically a tie? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, she can't fly that fast. Superman's not even He wasn't that. trying to beat Superman her. Superman did he... fly around the world pretty quick to turn Well, Jimmy Olsen did say that Supergirl flies faster than Superman. Yeah, and Superman flies fast enough to turn the world backwards. He, so. they, it wasn't really a race, though, because he needed her to throw him. No, it was a race. He ran, and Supergirl he ran, her, too. Yeah, but if he ran too fast... Oh, I, you saw the episode him. like I did. But she if he ran too fast, she, she wouldn't have been able to help him get back because she would have not been able to grab him and throw him. Yeah, he but she actually, was able to throw him faster he than pull, he was running. He had to pull back, though, because if he didn't, she wouldn't be able to help him get back. If she uh, I don't think him, so, George. But the thing is, in the flash... He told her you need flash. to throw me. If, you, if she can't throw him, if he goes too fast, then, she, then he won't get home. No, no he it, runs fast enough to open a portal, but she used her power to throw him into the portal. But, if but she was, was running bad, the same speed as he was. He had to let her keep up, because if he didn't... She wouldn't have been able to physically grab him and throw this him. This is what geeks argue over. <laughs> right. Okay, let me, if I could just throw in what I yeah, thought about the episode. Um, I enjoy both Flash and Supergirl because they're the, the sunny part of DC Comics. Good that point. They're heroes that enjoy what they're doing. So when they meet up, it's like, hey, I'm Flash. Hey, I'm Supergirl. You want to team up? Okay, sure. Oh, That's a good point. This kind of like you're an alien movie. from another planet. Cool. Okay, let's go have fun. I love Unlike that line. You've got Batman versus Superman. You're an alien from another planet. I'm going to stop you and kill you, and we're going to fight to the death. And you bad alien, wow. bad alien. Right. I mean, I've actually seen all this hero worship over Superman. He's bad. Right. Oh, is that Russ? I said I've actually seen a couple articles to that point. Point saying that uh, the title, the headline was the, the this crossover is the perfect antidote to Batman v Superman. Yeah, it's it, that is true. I'll give you that. Yeah, that you made a great point, John. Um, because they're 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 excited by the fact that they met each other, and it and it's it just kind of naturally feels like it's happening. Like he tells at the very end, for example, he says Kara Zor El because that's your alien name because you're an alien, which I think is cool. Right. Yeah. I love that point too, because like you say, with DC, it's all dark. It's it's you know you know dank. It's but, it's el- and people is, don't like it, and so when you look at Marvel, there are the people that like doing their yeah. job and so forth. Except when we're getting into these new wars or whatever. But that's the difference between Marvel, and I think that's why people are gravitating towards Flash and Supergirl is they're different from the Batman and the Superman, which they well, turn except them dark. the problem is this is all DC. We've got the movie division that's all dark and serious. And the TV division, that's all sunny and bright. But uh, they Supergirl don't has come together. Dark, so more, more, surprisingly, a little bit more than I expected. But you're right, they do tend to fix it quick, like as far as getting back to the light. Like, for example, the aforementioned episode where Supergirl um, went rogue. Right, was a yeah. little bit, a little, the but it still wasn't dark. It still it, wasn't really dark. Yeah, that's true. They used a they used a comedic spin on it. That's true. Right. I mean, she was just, just she didn't you know, kill playing a caricature I mean. almost. I mean, she wasn't really dark. If she and had you knew she was going to come back by the end of the episode. So when she threw Cat off that roof and then caught her just to make a point, they came, that was actually pretty dark. But however, she didn't actually kill anybody on purpose. Like it, they could have gone a lot darker, but they didn't. CBS now, does, does, does anyone remember the old Smallville series? Of course. We've talked about this. Yeah, of course. The, there was an episode where Clark got red kryptonite, yep. and he just became a, like a, a jerk. Oh, like a like, rebel. Right? Yeah, rebel, yeah. 
I remember that one. He didn't kill anybody or was really dangerous, but I think he went around maybe stealing money or something like that. Showing off. But yeah, oh, showing yeah. off, right? Yeah, that's a good point. He was doing pretty much what Kara did in this episode, the, or that episode, I should say, the one before. I'm sorry, I think to, my, to, he did, to me the looking at that when Kara went dark, I was like, I'm not buying that. I mean, I I don't think she's been in the character long enough to get a handle on how to play opposites, if you will. She's great at playing Supergirl. She's peppy. She's fun. She's vivacious. She smiles a lot and all that stuff. But then when they tried to bring her into the darkness in this first season, I'm like, they should have waited on that a little bit until they, until she'd had a time to get used to the character and understand the nuances and so forth. To me, I, I wasn't buying it. I, I was like, oh, that not whole really scene a great with the episode. fire department too. When I think when I we watched it, although I liked the fact that the fire department saved the day, it was played very hokey. It was probably the most hokey. You, you got all these people gathered around on the ground, and they kept focusing on that one black girl. Like she's the she's the represent <laughs> like she's the representative of all the people, and they're don't mind the her. massive superhero battle. Just yeah. stand and stare for a little <laughs> while, and run in front of her and say, "Cause she was get ready to save her life or sacrifice her life for us," and and she and Supergirl's like, "No, please don't." That whole part was pretty cheesy, but I let it go just because the whole I was I was still smiling from the way the whole episode went down. Um, I absolutely loved. Barry in this episode though it was just he was so and I like I said Win Win deserves a lot of recognition James Olsen yeah I know it's part of the plot he had to get jealous but they went a little far with that like you're oh you're a superhero too oh, oh, oh that's cool I guess you know mm-hmm. and it's like come on you don't why are you jealous there's not you're not even like they're they're not showing that there's a romance going on so why are you getting jealous just because she's met a guy from another world. You, I mean, it was just weird. It didn't. It felt that part felt a little forced about the jealousy. Um, well, I, I think again, you know, I think you know, Gary has had more time in his role, so he understands the Flash who? a little bit better than than. Um, uh, you mean Grant Gustin? Right. Right. I mean, uh, so yeah. So he's he's been in the role for a while. So he when he comes on, a new, he knows exactly who the Flash is and what he does and so forth. And he plays it great. And I, I guess I love their interaction. Those two they worked just together before. Fantastic might... on screen. And we should mention. I that... sort of want to address the uh, jealousy part. Go ahead. Well, you said that it seems a little forced. It's actually no. It's true to life. You see, guys love having that upper hand where the girl likes them, and then they're the ones being aloof. Yeah, but, but when they no, but when the tables are turned, and the girl is aloof, and the guy likes the girl. He's going to start acting the exact same, exact same way that Jimmy Olsen did when she was giving attention to the Flash and not him. To a degree, yeah, but don't, I but agree. But don't you think it's a little, little sophomore-ish? Where it's like high school. I he mean, didn't have a reason to think Well, define sophomore-ish in this sense. <laughs> in the, but I mean, he, he's like, he, he become, he's, he's like, oh, oh, you know, he's, he, he's, the way he was acting to the Flash, I mean, he was just... Being, he was so enjoying it. I mean, like, what the heck is his problem? Like, well, no, the Flash is—he's—he's he's a, he's a good-looking guy. He's yeah. in shape. He has a superpower. Jimmy Olsen, what's his superpower? He, Taking he, photos he has, he, or he pushing a button lost, on his he, watch he to call Superman? Superman? Come on. I mean, I know he, Superman. Well, I could run, you know, around the world in three seconds. Right, but just. Because he did, why would he assume that this man shows up all of a sudden? Supergirl's gonna fall in love with him. That That's quick? my point. Then he's right not, there. He's not, Thank you. Yeah, but she pretended like no, she, that guy she, took no, her attention away. No, no she, she was didn't. just super. She was just, she was just introducing she him. She was following the orders of Cat Grant. She actually wasn't. She didn't realize she was doing it until Cat pointed exactly. it out. Exactly. No, Cat it. told her to do fun. that, and she, she followed didn't it. Realize that she was Did you not watch the episode? Yes, three times actually. No, seven times. I'm sorry. Seven times. Seven times. This is what geeks argue about. My girlfriend was like, you're watching that again? I'm like, yes. What? How many times? I said seven. She's like, seriously? I'm like, it's that good. You should watch it. So. All right, yeah. then here's another question. Okay. How come when the Flash appeared in Supergirl's world, he just happened to appear in her city right as she was falling out the building? Because plot. Yeah, because because plot, plot, right. Plot device, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's true. 
I hope well, that's, that's anything. Uh, these super, superheroes appear when they're needed. So I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Them him appearing well, you've seen when his point of view needed. on the show too. Like from his point of view, he sees everything going slower. So although when we're watching it, it seems like he just came out of that breach and he sees her falling, but from his point of view, we've seen in, in, on the Flash that when he looks at things, it's going slower. So that's why he was able to react to that. He didn't oh, right. just know. That's fine, but why didn't he appear in that universe's version of Central City? Right, because plot. Because plot, right. <laughs> there might not be a national city in his world. The The space-time location might happen to be that Central City doesn't exist in their world, but instead oh, national... Okay, all right, That's sure. just a theory, but Central City could actually be national city in, in this universe, as far as location goes. It's possible. I mean, they haven't addressed it, but it makes sense to me, because... Central City may not even exist in, in this universe. And National City may not exist in his universe. They could be, they could just, City. Don't they, doesn't, <laughs> don't they reference National City in Flash and Arrow? Uh, no. I thought they may have done it. At least, as far as I know, but I don't believe they have. Um, it's, I think it's just an oversight on the part of the writers. It's fine. I, think it, I honestly don't think it's an oversight of the writers. I think what the, what the episode portrayed it really well. In my opinion. Yeah, they did. I mean, you it was know. one of those things... See, there were several things going on. All right, so you got, what, Banshee? What's that woman's name? The one uh, that Siobhan. screams? Yeah, Siobhan, Banshee. right? Oh, yeah. yeah, so, so, so Siobhan Banshee. screams, throws her out of the building. You know, she would have survived the fall, regardless, right? Yeah. However, it just so happens that Flash is running through dimensions, and he comes into their dimension. He sees somebody falling, he saves them. It just so happens to be Supergirl. Right. You know, poor CGI, by but, the way, on the fire on her clothes. Very poor. Yeah, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue CGI. I'm just happy that they had that episode. I, I love the crossover. But the fact that the matter is, Supergirl likes Jimmy Olsen, always has. Jimmy Olsen is now broken up with his girlfriend. Now he's like Oh, give me time, give me time. Don't tell me that you like me. So he's trying to have the upper hand, like, you know, we'll do it when I'm ready. So so Supergirl now has leverage with this Flash guy who's good-looking, in shape, and has a superpower. And then Cat Grant gives her the nudge and says, use that against Jimmy Olsen if you want him. So she does. You seem very fixated on this portion of the episode. Well, I am because you guys are tearing it apart like it was because, poor uh, written, well, it's not poorly not, written. Not poorly written. I'm just saying I don't interpret it the way you do. I'm well, I'm sorry so, you don't see it that no, way, exactly. Will. I don't you know, see it that way. I'm sorry. I, I'm, Supergirl, I'm sorry that Supergirl, nobody is interested Supergirl in you like is that. Not, is not doing this deliberately to get uh, Jimmy Olsen angry or jealous. She doesn't realize what she's doing. She, no, she, she knows because Cat no, Grant told not. her. She Cat not Grant realize. told her. Just look the way she's playing the part. She's laughing. She's she's not doing it seductively. She's just being. She hurt. might not realize it, but that's still the effect it had. Right, but she doesn't realize it. Uh, Anthony, to me, is what he's saying. She knows what she's doing. She's doing it. Yeah, because Cat get... Grant told her no, to do that. No. Do you not remember that episode? Yes, but it's, so when, when, when has Cat told her to do something? Cat told down? her. No, come on. You're not going to follow the advice of an old yeah, person. Yeah, and you she did. Without... No, she didn't. And then towards the end of the episode, Jimmy Olsen took the bait and said, Hey, look, you know, I like you. You know, uh, then, he turned, then he turned into a zombie. And then, <laughs> then he turned into a zombie after they kissed. I'm like, what the? No, <laughs> Is it good? Is it bad? Oh, wait. Now he's a zombie. That was funny at the end. When he's just standing there. But that was awesome. That was perfect. And she's, she's holding her mouth. She's like, what the hell did I just yeah, do? Yeah, so now it's a question mark. It reminds me of the time in uh, the Superman movie when Christopher Reeve kissed uh, Margot Kidder, Margot Kidder right? Yeah. And she, and then when he when he was done kissing her, she forgot. Right. Remember, <laughs> lost her memory. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why she was uh, found out later. She's pregnant in Superman Returns, which they retcon into. You know, we won't even go there. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was. I mean, so suffice it to say, as far as cross- crossovers go, not only was it a success. I'm curious to see when they do the follow up on the Flash. If he, I want. You think they're going to do a follow up though? They, I, from what I've heard, they're going to do that. They, so I, I want to hear Flash? him talk about Supergirl. See, that, that's the one I want to see, Supergirl in Flash's world. That too, but I want to hear him tell them what happened. 
You know what I mean? Right, but uh, seeing Supergirl in Flash's world, I hope it would she be gets awesome. to interact with the Green Arrow too, because that would be awesome. I oh, you just reminded me of that scene when he's trying to figure out if he's on the right Earth, and he says that was a lot of fun. That was awesome when he's like he's like dropping the doing the name drop, and he's like, "You don't know who I am, the Who now?" And then he's like, <laughs> right. Air, he's like Green Arrow. She's like shaking her head, no. He's like no, Firestorm, no Green Arrow, on her Adam. Wow. And she's like, sorry. So that's like it, obviously. But what, what about the what about the other way? Why doesn't she say? Well, have you ever heard of Superman or Batman? Who? I was hoping they would mention some of those. Because people. Superman exists in Supergirl's world. Right, right. So. I was hoping they would, but they didn't. So. That, they, they didn't do that, didn't they? They didn't say whether yeah. Superman or Unless Batman exists off in camera, their flash sometimes and Sometimes find out there was conversations that we didn't hear about on the show. Yeah. All right. Just so, so here's another question. Sure. Because. Uh, Supergirl is on CBS and Flash is on the CW, so two TV networks let their uh, characters cross over. But they bore, they're they both owned right. by the same people. I know they're both owned by DC Comics, but has this ever happened before? Yes. I have not seen that happen before, right. but Cat Grant did no, say... No, it has. It happened with... She, um, no, Cat Grant okay. did say when Jimmy Olsen, Kara, uh, the Flash, and the, and the, the other dude... We're in her office. She goes, "You guys look like a what spinoff of, C- oh, of the CW yeah. show. Yeah, oh, Do you guys yeah. remember yeah. that? Yeah. She said that. Yeah. I mean, that that was just a throwaway line to me. Just so you guys know, line. this has happened before. See, in fact, it's funny because Calista Flockhart, who plays Cat Grant, was part of what I'm about to tell you. Uh, years ago, the the there was a, a, a cross network thing with Ally McBeal from Fox and The Practice. And they did. They had Ally McBeal oh. go over to the practice, and and but the networks were owned by the same people, so they it was the same reasons why they allowed it. Okay, so that was Calista Flockhart. Before. Yep, Ally McBeal is. I Kat Grant. did not. Yeah, Cat Grant and Calista. Yeah, yeah. And I did not she's married to Harrison Ford, people. dude. She's married she, to I mean, Harrison Ford. She's playing completely different from Ally McBeal, which is great. Yeah. I didn't recognize her at all. Ally that was McBeal amazing. Was like, Wait, you did not recognize wow. Calista Flockhart? I mean, no, she's a walking skeleton. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, the, the attitude was Harrison so different. The, the character looked so different. That I, I didn't. I didn't realize it until just well, that the actress. She's, obviously, she's doing a good job. And yeah, yeah. she's completely divorced. She, um, from previous she hasn't done a show in years. I mean, she pretty much uh, was married to Harrison Ford and still is. And they, you know, were just living a normal life. And then she decided to come back to uh, do TV again. I see. To me, she's one of the stronger characters on that show. Oh, absolutely. Because right like, at the end, remember what she says? And she, yeah, she knows who the Flash is. And she's like, "Oh, come on! He's just appearing. The Flash is there. His little red suit. I mean, he's she's about his smart. Little red suit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But to me, is why hasn't she? Well, I know she's she hasn't figured out because John Jones has appeared. As well, Supergirl. she technically right. did yeah, figure it out. Um, John but she did figure it out at one point. She did figure out Supergirl was Kara. So she did figure yeah, it I'm out. Sure she still said, knows, but. She's not going to say anything. Uh, well, yeah, it's when she saw Kara and Supergirl in the same room, even right, though right. that was John Jones. She, if, right. she ever, she, if she ever yeah. finds out that there's a shapeshifter, it might change the change, change things back where she realizes, oh, you know. But right now, she's she's very observant. Um, and like we talked about in one episode, I said. Cat Grant has been around since the 1980s. The character has been portrayed by different people. Um, on Smallville, she was portrayed as being the opposite of the way she is in this show, like a stupid idiot. Um, but she was in Lois and Clark, played by Tracy Scoggins, who played uh, Captain Lockley on Babylon 5's final season. Um, and, I mean, this is the best version of her, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, the character has been around. She just never got this kind of a, a spotlight. And what's interesting is also is that Cat Grant... Like Lois and Superman, and everybody have been around since the 1930s, but Cat Grant only came into play in the 80s when, with George Perez when he brought a, a, a new version of Superman to the table. That's no problem. I don't have a problem with introducing characters, but as long as they make you, I mean, I like the way that she, they've, they've introduced her, and she's she's smart. She's she, she's I mean, she's she, catty as hell. She is catty as hell. Well, she it's great. logical to put her in the show because she's sort of the female version of J. Jonah Jameson or Perry White. Right, yes. exactly. Exactly, exactly. Except she has a better, more interesting dynamic to the relationship. J. Jonah never had anything redeeming about him when it comes to him, his, him and Peter's relationship. Um, Perry White's always been 
well, Clark's boss, so it's never been like a big deal with him. But I do, I think that the way that they use Cat in this show is smart, um, and she was a good actress to pick for that part. All right, well, we we really could talk so much more about Supergirl and the crossover. Um, hell, I could spend a whole show talking just about this one episode. <laughs> um, who here has seen Star Wars Rebels? Or let me ask you this. I know that people like Star Wars, uh, but who has seen, before I even talk about Rebels, who has seen, I know, John, you probably have, and I know Ross has, but who has seen The Clone Wars? I've seen yep. a few episodes, but not everything. Yeah, I've seen The Clone Wars. Okay. Star Wars Rebels has been on the air now for two, this is the end of the second season. It's canon. It's part of the what they call the canon of going forward of us, uh, of meaning it happened. They just had an ep- a two-part episode. I know, Ross, how you feel about this, so we'll get your reaction. But I watched it this morning, and oh my effing God. I don't know if we want to talk spoilers about it. Yeah, screw it. We'll do it. I'm going to warn everybody listening right now. If you have not seen the finale of Rebels, which is entitled Twilight of the Apprentice, I'm going to highly recommend that you uh, just tune out for like uh, hopefully 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't know, honestly, how long it's going to take to talk about this. Um, but It's going to be a bit. Ahsoka Tano was uh, Anakin's apprentice in Clone Wars. Takes the, now, and then years later, she left the Jedi Order. And then in Rebels, she came back at the end of Season 1 to help the Rebels. But she's no longer a Jedi. She has white lightsabers, which is really cool. It's supposed to reflect... She left the Order uh, prior to Revenge of the Sith. Right. Because she was accused of murder... And the Jedi wouldn't back her up. They, they expelled they her. They threw her to the wolves, right. And, and when she, she was acquitted, she decided not to go back. And because... then they made that crappy line about how they, this is your greatest trial, when they were just trying to, like, kiss butt. Um, and she said, nah, 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 I'm done with you guys. And and then Anakin was pissed that she left, because it felt like a betrayal to him. Well, But he understood. Mm, yeah, that's true, he did. She and, you, and she hinted she knew about him and Padme, too, in that one scene. Um... But the character started off as a, a like nobody liked her at the very beginning. She grew on everybody. She melt, sort of you know she got into your hearts. The in the in the voice actress Ashley X X X clean I forget her name Ashley X clean I I can't pronounce her last name. She's incredible and she grew on everybody and to where Ahsoka became so loved as a character. Side so note: came, also the owner of her universe. Yeah, yes, Dave Filoni. Um, he 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 didn't want to. He wanted to make sure she's been... He, he fell in love with his, that character along with the fans. And he wasn't even expecting to end up embracing her as much as he did. So, for those in the audience that don't know, in the first Clone Wars movie that, that, pre, that sort of predated the uh, series itself, Yoda gives him Anakin an apprentice, Ahsoka Tano. Now, the reason he gives her an apprentice is the idea is Anakin is so wild and, 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 and powerful... He wants to give him a sense of responsibility. It's sort of like giving somebody a dog, I guess. I know that's a bad example. He wanted her to... By giving her an apprentice, the idea was it will force him to take responsibility, to step up and maybe make him behave because he's he's responsible for somebody else. And the relationship between the the two of them was amazing and it grew and developed over six years of Star Wars, The Clone Wars. So she left the Jedi Order, like Ross said, because she was accused of a murder she didn't commit. And by the time Anakin proved that she was innocent, the Jedi Order tried to ask her back and tried to, you know, BS her. Like, we always knew there was some kind of a, a test or the Force works in mysterious ways. And she was like, screw you guys. And she left. And this obviously was, was a plot device so that she would survive Order 66 because technically she was no longer a Jedi. So she wasn't on the hit list. So... She came back at the end of Rebel Season 1. She re- she was revealed to be the secret agent that was helping them. And she became a big part of Season 2. And she started to figure out that Vader might might be Anakin. She wasn't sure because it's not like the world knows the universe. George? Go ahead. At the beginning of Season 2, there was a an hour-long special called The Siege of Lothal. Yes. In that the crew from Rebels finally get a taste of the big time, working with the larger Rebels. Unfortunately, the events of the first season brought about uh, Vader visiting their planets, and that ended badly for them. And in that moment, 
Ahsoka was able to get a glimpse into the mind of the Sith Lord that they were facing, and that's when she first started to sus- be suspicious at who Darth Vader really was. Not only that, but he realized she was still alive and told the Emperor, and they were like, oh, well, she could lead us to the other rebels, other Jedi that might still be alive. And So, uh, the Apprentice lives. And then the fans were going crazy. They wanted to see uh, Vader and Ahsoka, the showdown. They've been, everybody's been waiting all year for it. And so, again, a little spoilery. Actually, it's a lot spoilery. Um, they they finally had their showdown. And, and Darth Maul came back. But as he revealed, he's no longer considers himself a Sith. He's Maul. Probably the most vicious episode of Rebels. And it's a kid's show, but yet people are getting cut in half. They're, you know... Inquisitors are getting so killed. much be count. Oh my God, Darth Maul. I'm sorry. Takes wants to make Ezra his apprentice. They're they're trying to get a Sith holocron. Um, he's pretending <clears throat> to be like Yoda, where he's the like the he's like the I'm not, I'm the innocent old guy, and he's like trying they have to, to fight off three Inquisitors now. Oh my God, Maul. Inquisitors are Jedi hunters. Yeah. They are the equivalent of Sith apprentices. They're so they're dark skilled Jedi. in the Force. They wield a, they all wield a similar lightsaber, which is a double bladed saber that saber, has the I ability to spin. It yeah, spins on its own without them rocket. having to move their arms. And as the, and this was the silly part of the episode, they're flying around like little helicopters, like gyrocopters with this. I actually kind of like that. Yeah, but they're made of energy. Why would they have enough mass to create? Anyways, you know what I'm saying. But it's a minor quibble. But they uh, not only did. Bad guy. Did people get killed a lot in this episode? Darth Maul, Sarah Michelle Gellar, who was married to Freddie Prince Jr., who plays Kanan on Rebels, her character, who's the seventh sister, who's one of the Inquisitors, Darth Maul, he cleaves her in half. Now, this is a Disney show, so they can only show so much gore. But the way they handled it was you knew she got cut in half by showing two different sets of body parts falling without actually being too obvious for the kids. I loved it. I love how they how they yeah. made they made you aware. Everybody what, following so far. They made you aware of mm-hmm. what they made you aware of what Maul did to her, without being too gross for the kids. It was just the way the camera tricks worked. It was awesome. They killed the other Inquisitor. And I gotta say, good. I gotta say, I really like how they introduced Maul in this episode. When you first see him, he's shrouded. He's got a he's got a hood on and he's in the shadows. You don't see him. That's he's what they stooped over. Him, the he shadow. looks like this like just an old man who's kind of lost on Did we tell him where the where this is located? Where they this all this goes down? Malachor, the planet Malachor. Is from, it's from the Ooh. EU. You know where that is, John? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Knights of the Old Republic. It's where Reven had a temple. Oh, that's right. It's where Reven, Reven s- officially Reven. fell. Revan, sorry. Okay, so they had they they followed the lore. They had all you know, like Pompeii, where they found the people who were so superheated that they were frozen in ash, like statues. That's what that you see all these Sith and Jedi in mid battle superheated into statues because of whatever happened with the super weapon on Malachor. And Ezra Back to Maul found... for a moment. As as the episode progresses, he he slowly. His his stoop goes away. He's standing up straighter. You're seeing more of his face reflected in the lights. So you're seeing hints of the the facial tattoos until finally he removes the 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 hood, the hood. and tells yeah. Ezra who he is. It was a it was a wonderful way of kind of easing yourself into it. So if you didn't see the all the promotional stuff that came before, you understand the you, significance you, of it. Yeah, the mystery of it. Well, also that in the tri-saber moment, because I'll call, here's a little trivia. This isn't a spoiler because people, uh, w- w- when the people make, um, like, for example, Darth, uh, sorry, Kylo Ren and his tri-saber, okay? They, when they make the toys for it and they promote it, they, you know, you know, there's a backstory that they write onto the description. John, in a way, it's kind of like, if you were go, if you were to go to your site, Vanishing Point, it would be like someone seeing a description of the backstory to that item. So mm-hmm. they talk about how he found it on Malachor. It was an ancient weapon. Well, they're on Malachor, and what does Ezra see? A whole bunch of tri blades laying around on the ground. He picks he, up a crossguard saber and up, ignites it. Oh. And it fizzles out after about two seconds, but it was a green one. So and and then he was he was explained. Now. Darth Maul not only betrays them in this two-part episode, but some major consequences came out of this 
and I want to address that a little bit. Uh, Ross, what happens to Cam? You guys uh, up for the spoiler? The rest of the spoilers? Yeah, you guys mind? Mm-hmm. Yeah, do it. Go ahead. All right. Ross, so first off, all three Inquisitors get killed. Well, we talked about that. But tell me what happens to Kanan. Yeah, one after another. Kanan, after Maul turns on, uh, turns on both Ahsoka and Kanan, he blinds Kanan with a lightsaber strike right across his face. As we Ooh. all know, though, from the first movie, Jedi are trained to fight with their eyes closed, right? So this has led into a nice little poetic moment where Kanan s- defeats Darth Maul because it doesn't matter if he's blind. The difference between the Sith and the Jedi are excellently highlighted in this episode because we've seen Luke get trained with the with, with the blast shield over his eyes. So it kind of played into the fact that maybe the Sith are not trained in that way. And in fact, in some ways, that's the whole point of the episode. Darth Maul actually points out to Ezra the differences between how someone is trained to be a Jedi and how someone is trained to be a Sith. And I think there is no greater moment to demonstrate that to the Jedi strength, then when Maul blinds uh, Kanan, for good, by the way, permanent, he, he basically slices his eyes out with his lightsaber. When Kanan focuses on the Force and he manages to beat Maul, he doesn't kill him, but he manages to beat him even though he's blind. Maul doesn't expect it, but that sort of, to me, says the Sith aren't trained that way, that they're not trained to fight blind, you know, the way the Jedi are, to trust those other senses. So... I think it was an excellent example of how you're paying homage to what we've seen in the films with Luke being trained to trust his senses and you don't need your eyes. You've got other senses and the force to guide you. It's not the first... uh... I have a question. Go ahead. Isn't Darth Maul the guy who got cut in half by... uh... He came back in Clone Wars, in case people don't know. In a, right, very, so... in a very popular arc where this... The, so he uh, was cut in half and died and then came back to life. He, he was cut in half. He, he didn't die. Dark, he di- well, he how, do you, how do you, how do you, re- how do you reconstitute? force of will. Anger. So pain. he's got his legs back. We so they people. gave him robotic legs? Yep. Yes. Oh, he's got robotic legs so he's half robot? Well, he explained... Pretty much. It's actually explained in a good way, not in a cheesy way, in the for, in the in the Clone Wars when he comes back. He actually explains how the dark side it's because you got to think about what the dark side does. It takes your anger, your fear, your aggression and it makes you more powerful when you're focused on that. So when Obi-Wan cut him in half, he used the, he was a, he was able to embrace the dark side even stronger because he was in so much pain. So the dark side sort of kept him alive long enough for him to be dis, to to be rescued and to be uh, given cybernetic uh life-saving, you know, lower body I know it's not canon anymore because they they got rid of all of the books after um, the Return of the Jedi, but there was one of those books that I read a long time ago, where Anakin or uh, uh, whatever uh, one of the Jedi were doing, and they were going against you know why it happens. With, uh, I think it was Anakin because he was really good with machines, and they're like Jedi, you're not usually good with machines because when more machines you get, the less force sensitive you become. They never actually said that, but it makes sense. I mean, we've never seen Vader use the Force lightning, for example. Well, that's because he has... Robots. We also yeah. never see Vader run. <laughs> he never ran. He doesn't have to. He's too cool to run. Even in Clone Wars, he never runs. He just strides. Well, I don't think the, I mean, the actor who played him is you know, one of those giants. I mean, he's seven foot something or other, right? So I don't think he could have run. I mean, he would think he... I don't know whether he could or not, but... It would have been funny to see Darth Vader running, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. I well, mean, maybe, maybe we'll get an episode where he jumps around like Yoda. He does really often, especially in Rebels. It's this is the second time that they've that the crew from Rebels have had to confront Vader. It's a nice bookend the season, and the fight between Vader and Ahsoka. I, for one, have been waiting for this fight for a long time, especially when they teased it in the promotional art, and it was everything I was hoping for. See, the thing also is that with, with, with Darth Maul, or I'm sorry, Maul, he calls himself now, he points out to Ezra, who, for those that don't know, Ezra's the, like, almost kind of the main character of Rebels. Um, he's the kid that's, like, he's actually about the same age as Luke. He was born on uh, 
Empire Day is what they call it. The same as Luke and Leia. And, and Leia has been on the show this year. We, we actually got to meet Leia, a young Leia, about 16 years old. She had a great interaction with, with uh, Kanan and Ezra. And the character of um, <clears throat> Kanan, when Freddie Prince Jr. was... Freddie Prince Jr. was on an episode of um, uh, this other podcast I watch. And he told them that when he was pulled into the audition, he didn't even know what he was auditioning for at the time. What they basically told him is, your character is Han Solo if he was a Jedi. Except now he's a, he's an ex-Jedi. He's trying to hide it because his, his master was killed during Order 66. He went into hiding and became more like a bounty hunter. As the show progressed, he started embracing his Jedi self again. He got knighted, and now he's blind. I'm start. He's been through a lot of crap. Maul has been through a lot of suffering too. You sort of sympathize with him because if you watch the Clone Wars, he went through so much crap. He had a brother, and his brother, the Emperor, killed his brother. Um, and he he really cared about his brother too. I mean, he as much as a Sith can. They had a great kind of evil relationship, but yet as brothers. You know what I'm saying, Ross? And well, the guy was a Jemadar. He was huge and bulky and mean much. and just tore through everything. And then they had the witches of Dathomir. Now the witches. What's interesting about the witches is is that what they called the witches? Was, am I saying that right? I forget the name. Are they enough. the witches of Eastwick? I'm, no, <laughs> the Night Sisters. That's what they called. So, the, uh, so the way the canon works is the yeah, witch, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. The witches on this, they use force magic. They're not Sith. They're not Jedi. They use their own thing called force magic. They're, they're the green stuff, I guess you call it. And they, they were part of why Darth Maul survived because they used their force magic to make him stay alive and, and fuse him with that cybernetic body. So, and a matter of fact, the, the, the head of the Knights has just almost defeated Mace Windu in a battle um, in, the, in an episode. So, um, Darth Maul's brother... Darth Maul almost took over the planet Mandalore, which is where Boba Fett's from. Uh, it was an epic story arc. It was awesome. and um, It was beautiful. It was. And the actor, Sam Whitworth, who plays, who does the voice of Darth Maul, he did the voice of Starkiller in the game Force Unleashed. Great actor. Great voice actor, I should say. Yep. He came back for this older Darth Maul. But what was interesting was the way they presented Maul when we first see him in this episode is he was mirroring Yoda. Now, you remember when Luke met Yoda on Dagobah, he was looking for a great warrior. He was looking for Yoda. He heard about him through Ben. And he he didn't expect this crippled old walking with a cane alien to, I mean you no harm, blah, 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 blah. And then you later find out he's Yoda. Well, they did the same thing in a mirror with Maul. He starts off when he meets Ezra on the Sith planet there, and he's walking with a cane. He's going, I mean you no harm. I'm just an old man who got lost or whatever. And then over the episode, his true nature comes out. And it was just a really nice mirror of Yoda, of how they did it. And then he explains, I'm no longer a Sith. The Sith took me from my family when I was a kid. I had no choice. They, 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 you know, they basically raised me to be this machine, this warrior. And then when, I, when they were done with me, they cast me aside and I want revenge. So he has his own agenda. He's not a Sith. He's not a Jedi. He's just and it a... doesn't take him long to want to poach Ezra right off of Kanan. It was a very interesting interaction. Yeah, so there's so much going on that I can't wait for season three. And as far as Ahsoka and her showdown with Anakin, she finally saw and, re- and she cut his helmet with her lightsaber. She kind of actually that, won. That was amazing. She actually In that you know, moment, they, they looked at each other in each other's eyes, and yeah. when Vader spoke... It wasn't just James Earl Jones' voice. It was the, it was dual the voice Clone thing. Wars yep. Anakin voice, and they overlaid at the same time. Exactly. So when Vader told her, now you will die, it wasn't Vader just telling her that. It was Anakin too, and, I and want to it point, was heartbreaking. And I want to point out, she kind of won the fight, I think. It was almost a match. And but... now you will die. Dude, she's I don't seriously... Know about winning. I mean, Vader well, walked out he... of that temple He was alone. wrecked. He was wrecked. She wasn't. She wasn't. She wasn't injured. She didn't even have a single hit. He on wasn't her. wrecked. He was standing tall and he wasn't wheezing like he usually does when he gets his ass kicked. I don't know. I think that she beat. I, it was kind of a. Uh, 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 what's that word? A stalemate. Well, a little bit. Stalemate. But she didn't lose. Let's put it that way. 
And she and she did not die like everybody expected her to. She walked deeper into the temple. Everybody thinks she's dead though, because she she forced everybody else to leave so she could hold Vader off so they could escape. So they Maul survived she, too. Maul survived. He, in fact, he stole his Tie Fighter, <laughs> Vader's Tie Fighter. That was kind of funny. You know, those he stole one of the Inqu- Inquisitors' Tie Fighters. You, I think that was Vader's Tie Fighter. Actually, I got that. That much. was the Inquisitors. Vader's has the angular sides. That one was curved. Are you sure about that? Yes. You could be right. Um, yeah, because they have to actually explain otherwise how he escaped, right? But you know what? The thing that's cool is going forward. I mean, will they eventually kill Ahsoka? I don't think they need to because he's, she's not a threat to the future of the story. I mean, she doesn't have to die so that, so that Luke can get his glory. They can find... Blade, obviously, they blinded Kanan in order to... I mean, that right there alone can kind of explain why he's not heavily... I mean, part of the prophecy because he's he's been... Uh, you know, his power has been diluted because he's blinded. He's you know, far from the first Jedi to be, or Force user to be blind and still be a threat. I know, but he has to get used to it. This is, I, I watched an interview with the cast, and Freddie said that's part of the challenge of season three is him adjusting, adjusting to his new limitations and counting on the Force more because of his limits, because he doesn't have his eyes anymore. I don't know. It's just so fascinating. I mean, I, I can't wait. And to wrap it all up, Ezra is now in possession of a, a, Sith, a holocron. Sith holocron. Oh, yeah. I'm very curious to where that's going to go. I'm hoping that we see Darth Raven. Raven? 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 You know what I mean. I'm hoping that some... Revan. Revan. But Revan's... Revan. Revan's thousands of years before this, isn't he? I mean... Yeah, but this is a holocron. It's it's basically his... They didn't oh, mention him, but they did imply what happened on Malachor. Revan was supposed oh, okay. to be in Clone Wars, uh, but the, the episode where he was supposed to be in it ended up getting changed, and they, they already had the model made and everything, but they made a last-minute change to the episode he was supposed to be in. So people know that because he was supposed to be in Clone Wars... It's imminent that he's going to be somehow included in all of this. They didn't choose Malachor for the hell of it. You know what I mean, Ross? And Will? I, I can understand why they made the change. I mean, Darth Bane is a is a better a better idea because he is I, kind of the he is the embodiment of the rule of two, which is how we've seen the Sith for the oh, entirety of their on screen appearance. Did you catch that? By the way, I don't know. I mean, when of uh, course I did. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So Anthony and Will, uh, throughout the episode, they had these... Di- everything about the Rule of Two Matt, was how you get into the temple. It was sort of Indiana Jones-like. The trick to getting into the temple, as uh, Darth Maul and Ezra were trying to r- find ways to get inside the temple, the Sith created these sequences of things that you involve two... You always have to have two people. And it has to be a master, and it has to be an apprentice. For everything. This entire episode. Well, that's was the a whole showcase. Sith uh, mo. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you have the master entire, and the apprentice. Yeah. This entire episode. But isn't that the Jedi apprentice thing too? I mean, they have no. master and apprentice. No, not too. the Jedi, but it's more the Sith. Sith this about- entire episode is a showcase of the Sith. Yeah. They everything explain- about it was was an embodiment of who they are, how they operate, and a, and an insight into what they are. In fact, Maul actually explains the rule of two in this episode. He says it in words. I can't, you know, repeat it exact, but he actually explains to Ezra why the Sith went to the rule of two, and it has. He something even to... briefly wins Ezra's trust. Uh, yeah, he did a great job at, at learning from his uh, past and, and manipulating and and doing what he had. By the time he actually turned around and attacked Kanan, I even was shocked as a viewer. I actually thought he might have been sincere for once. That's how good they did. I was, I was actually looking forward to, the, uh, to seeing him as something of a, a dark ally. I was actually... By the time he actually played, uh, revealed his hand, you might say, I, I was almost ready to clap and stand up because they made the viewers... It wasn't like George Lucas wrote it where he would it'd be so obvious. To, uh, blah, blah, blah. It was actually so... You're, you're, throughout the episode, you're wondering, is he being sincere? Did he actually learn something through his experiences about, you know, what went wrong with the Sith? And then when he finally plays his hand and you realize what he's doing, it was like, oh, that makes total sense now. He may not have been a I smart... I do have to... 
Go ahead. I, I do have to question his his wisdom at attacking both Kanan. I was just and... going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and Ahsoka at the so- same time. Uh, Kanan's one thing, but he he should have known Ahsoka was a threat. She's she's Anakin Skywalker's apprentice. He he she's, could she could have beat him. She if Kanan could beat him, which he did, then so could Ahsoka. She obviously. let Kanan beat him. Yeah, she could have beaten Maul easily. Yes, but she let Kanan beat him. <laughs> Blinded Kanan beat Maul. And this is what I love was the fact that he not only beat him, he did it within about ten seconds. Ten seconds. I counted it when I was rewatching it. Maul was all cocky, thinking, "I'll make this quick," because he thinks he's gonna finish up Kanan like he's nothing, because he's already blinded him. And Kanan says, "You already had your shot," and boom, he beats him. That was awesome. You have to see it. I, mean, I don't think we need to give away the details of how he beats him, but the way that I think we're ready to move on. Yeah, we're ready to move on. But he did, I'm just saying, it was an impressive episode. It was great. All right, so. So we're, let's touch about touch on one other thing uh, for this episode, and that is uh, Arrow. Now I have I'm only about two episodes behind on Arrow. John, I know that you watch Arrow. How far are you yeah, up to date? Watched, been watching it for a while. Are you completely up to date with it? Yes. Uh huh. All right. So what's been your overall impression about this season of Arrow? Um, I like it. I think it's getting better. Um. I think the characters are starting to develop. It's it's becoming less dark than the previous seasons. Also, did you by any chance see the? I know you don't. You probably don't watch Legends of Tomorrow, or do you? Because they had an episode yes, called. Uh, uh-huh. Oh, really? Okay. What, yeah. Did you see the episode where they went to the future and they met the future? Yes, and they had future Green Arrow. Yep. So, obviously, that future is not going to probably happen. But they did make a lot of Easter egg nods to stuff that has happened in DC canon, like he had the, the arm missing, which is actually something that happened to his son. Um, uh, 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 what's his face? Roy, Roy Harper, in the which he, well in the comics, that's his son, because his his arm was ripped off. Um, do you? What do you? I mean, do you think that they're going to? Uh, I mean, what's your thoughts as far as where they're headed with this, as far as the future of the show? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, because supposedly somebody dies this season. Oh, uh, really? Because, I didn't hear that. Oh, well, the first episode back in January had Oliver and Barry standing over somebody's grave. But That's they right, didn't, and we they couldn't figure out who it was, who, right? Who it was, right. And then in the trailers for next week's episode, it sounds like somebody might get killed. But again, they're not going to say who until it actually airs. I think it's interesting that they, because they don't have the rights to Batman for this show. I mean, everybody's noticed that, that Green Arrow has filled the role of what Batman should be doing. Right, come, yes. uh, Have you noticed that like when they made uh, Felicity become uh, paralyzed, even though they're kind of, you know, course correcting that, it seems like they're kind of, they're really hammering home how they're paralleling Batman because obviously that's like Oracle with Batman. Right. I mean, yeah, she could have been like Oracle. What do you think? Uh, anyone else wants to jump in? Well, for me, I mean, I've been following the season. I mean, I, I got caught up with Netflix. I watched the first two seasons. I liked the first season. I didn't like last season. It was a little last weird. season was a little hit or miss. I agree. Right, but this season they're back on track. Uh, you know, he's not all over the place. I didn't like the stuff where, you know, again, mirroring Batman, they had the, um, the those ninjas, the, you know, the um, the hand or whatever it is, the, you know, the Ra's al Ghul, right? I mean, so, but that was... Oh, that, the, that League, actually, the League of Assassins. Right, the League of Assassins. That comes right? from Batman. And so, yeah, but, you know, it was then, is the Green Arrow on this one? Okay, well, that's fine if you want to play around with it. But I, I, I think, I don't know, I see, I'm, again, they've got me guessing. I don't know who's going to die. I don't know where they're going with this because they had the the big bad guy who was magical. They took his power away. Now he's in prison. He's about to get out again. I don't know whether he's going to get his power back. The flashbacks are about that idol that gives people the ability, the, you know, the the ability to survive gunshots and they can suck people's lives away. And they just, I think that's going to be playing a part in this somewhere down the line. Someone's going to get a hold of it. Maybe this uh, bad guy that they got in prison right now. I don't know. 
I mean, they, they've got so many different things uh, juggling in the air. I want to bring you know. something up real quick. Um, this is worth mentioning, in my opinion. We didn't plan it, but I, I mean, talking about Arrow in general, the Vixen episode, for example. This There's something that happened here that no one's ever done. They met on an animated short thing. I mean, most fans never even saw it. But yet oh, they, that's right. Yeah. But yet they addressed the episode. Like, in fact, in the Vixen episode, they talk about stuff that happened in the animated short as if everybody knows what happened. And I think that was actually very brave of them because the odds of everybody, all the fans having seen that are pretty low. I mean, let's be real. So the fact that they did that, I thought was neat because they did, instead of doing like a, like, let's not count the animated short thing that you guys did, which in fact, Grant Gustin didn't even uh, voice the flash for that. Uh, I think it was very interesting because they're assuming that people saw it. What do you guys think? Whoever I've not seen it. it, so I don't know. <laughs> you know yeah. Well, I mean, did you see the Vixen episode and not the animated, or neither? Neither. I didn't see that one. Great. I can't remember. You have to remind me. It's, I've seen uh, all the seasons this, this... I mean, all the episodes this season. But again, they're kind of running together the earlier seasons. Vixen... Do you know who Vixen is in general? No. She's a Justice League character who has the power to capture the spirits of animals into her Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I remember now. Uh, that's okay. I, like, I don't, I don't remember the names. I remember what she, she was did. in the car- cartoon. Yes, the, I remember she that. She did Green Arrow, yeah. Right, and then episode. in this episode, she uh, helped Green Arrow again defeat uh, Damian Dark. Yeah. And you're right that they talked about, talked about, oh, yeah, when we met back in Detroit, which was in the animated show that they were on. They made the assumption that everybody has seen the cartoon. And the reason I hadn't even at that point seen the cartoon, I knew generally what was going on, but it was like, I thought it was very brave of them the way they did that. Because it was almost like the audience is being uh, shown that they have a history. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think it hurt the episode at all. But I thought it was actually pretty interesting that they did that. That approach is, is not normal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially when it's a... I, like I said, I, I didn't even know there was a, a an animated portion of it that... It was a had. short special they did online online that's free to watch. But in that episode, The Flash and Arrow meet Vixen in Chicago or wherever the hell she's from. And they do this little adventure with her. So she's actually making references to stuff that was in this little animated short that... Well, maybe they're going to be introducing her... As a character on DC for you know that uh, uh, D- uh, Heroes of Tomorrow, whatever it is, Legends uh, of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow, yeah. But I mean, the, so I mean, they could be bringing her into the the world as this way. I mean, that's just a way to connect everything up. It's the fact that they were so casual about how when she comes on the episode, uh, and when you watch it, you'll understand. They, it's like they just, exp- it's like, hey, what's up? Remember what happened with Barry and whatever? And it was like. I well, again, think... if, you, if you think about it, they don't want to just have her introduce it and then have to go through all backstory and so forth. If they just introduce, even if you didn't see the the, 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 the animation or the animated episode, they can just say, look, they already know each other. I, I think it's very smart to say, look, we don't need to introduce her. You know her from the comics. Or if you don't, this is, they just know each other. She knows And that's them. what she actually did... works about this episode right. is so, that they again, don't. Like when you they have, don't have Supergirl to on the Flash, they have to introduce it and all the talking about the stuff. This one, they just, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? And then they get to work, you know? Anthony, did you see either one of the episodes? He's uh, AFK. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, what about you, Ross? I haven't caught up fully on Arrow yet. I'm still at the beginning of season two. Oh, you're way behind. Oh, you're I'm way sorry. behind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, season two is really season two is really good one though. John, did you? So John, I've gathered from what you just said a minute ago that you did actually see the uh, Vixen episode. Yes. Uh-huh. When you were watching it, did you feel like you were lost, or did it? Not, did it just kind of go? Yeah, whatever. They're talking about some kind of a, of uh, exposition about their past. It could have been any show where they say we worked together on this one case. See, that's right. the reason why I'm fine with it. Is because if you watch Law and Order or some show. And they introduce a character that these people have worked with before, right? They're going to sometimes go, there's a history. And 
That's why I think it works. Because if you watch the animated thing, you get more out of it, obviously. But if you didn't watch the animated thing, it doesn't hurt anything at all. It's not required. Hurt, did. I didn't know about the animation. And I just assumed that they obviously had met somewhere. And there was just, just a reference to it. That's fine. Well, yeah, exactly. Just go along with it. Okay, they met before. All right, fine. Let's get to the story. That's exactly what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yep. I think it, the way they did it was smart. Because if you do watch the animated thing... You're going to get more out of it. Now, Anthony, since you're back, did you see the Vixen episode of Arrow and or did you see the animated thing that, that introduced her in the first place? I did not. Either one? No. On, with the Vixen thing on Arrow? Remind yeah, yes. me. She was the one that could contact spirits of animals and, and, and use their powers. And she was... Uh, she she actually it was introduced in the animated, in the animated short. I but... think I'm, in a, I'm, I'm a season behind. Oh, okay. Here's Again, when, when you talk about the Vixen episode, there was a very corny line that they gave her where she's, she's beating up this guy, and he goes, when you, the, the bad guy, you know, she's zipping around, and he goes, why don't you come out and fight me like a man? And then she says, why don't I just kick your ass like a woman? I'm like, that was a great what? line. I love but that it was line. a cheesy line. I'm like, okay. But it was still cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's cheesy stuff that superheroes say, okay, but I was like, oh, she, yeah. that's what she's going to... I thought, I was like, okay, I'm not really going to... I mean, she's going to be this corny. I may not like the character, but she was fine in the episode. They, I, it, what was neat about her was that she was not used to the point where um, they overdid her, but they used her just enough to make sense for how to defeat Damien Dark for this. You know what I mean? Because right. they wanted right. to bring in Constantine. She, they even name-dropped him. But he was so I, love, I, I love when they brought Constantine on in the early parts of the he's season. He's in hell, literally. Oh, but uh, yeah, he's a, I'm like, well, how did he, that? That was the teaser to me. Why is he in hell? Where the hell is he? How did he get there? Because I love Constantine. The you know that, the fans I mean, want I him back. That, I, I'm pissed that the NBC canceled that show. That was a fantastic show. John, did you used to watch Constantine when it was on NBC? No, I didn't. And that's oh, fine. I, that I didn't show. either. I watched. I watched the pilot. That was about it. Oh, but it, I, it was a great show. I mean, Ross, the, I mean, you... great. I mean, the, the the episodes may have got a little corny, but the, his character, he nailed it. I mean, he absolutely nailed that character. Look, the fact is that Stephen Amell was such a fan as, and he was one that petitioned for them to bring the character and get and get the CW to get permission to bring him over to the to Arrow. Yeah. yeah. Now. That's weird. It's it's not normal. The fact that you can... It's like saying... This, it, it's sort of the equivalent of saying, hey, can we get Linda, Linda Carter to play Wonder Woman? You know what I mean? Like, they not only got permission to bring Constantine to Arrow, but the same guy who played Right. Him. Right. The, the thing actor. is... <laughs> that episode, right? Where Green Arrow's like, oh yeah, he's in hell. How does he know he's in hell? Because there's obviously stuff going on. Right, the there's scenes. stuff going on behind the there's background that we're not privy to. Other, yeah. And I'm like, okay, how does he know it? Who's he talking to? Sometimes <laughs> you don't need to explain. You know, it's just let but it I go. But I want to know. That's <laughs> one of the things I want to know. How does he know he's in hell? He knows a guy. It's like, you he need some, some help with the magic? I know a guy. And that's right. his Noah guy. You know, his guy. Oh, that, that, Constantine... I was like, what the hell? I mean, he just drop that. That was something that they just dropped, throw away line in the episode. But I was like, I'm sitting on what? What the hell? Why is he in hell? But the fact I'm that they used there, the Why is he in hell? Back... How do you know he's there? But you know what's cool about this is they did it and they, it, they've they always had the whole island flashback as a thing on Arrow. So they threw Constantine into an island flashback. So I thought yeah, that was see, a that, double. I mean, I love that. I mean, that, that was, was a double on the island. God or whatever you call it. You know, it... <sighs> yeah. It worked because of the because of the context. But what, I mean, I, if you never watched the episode, you never seen it. What did you think? I mean, again, if you have to know a little bit about the comics, what did you think of him playing as Constantine? I thought he, to me, he was a hell. I mean, yeah, Keanu Reeves who but butchered it. I mean, just like Ryan Reynolds. I mean, they butchered him when they did the green. They, the, they did know, not get Constantine Green Lantern on the show. NBC it, show. I'm going to just say it right there. They, but again, NBC, of... I was like, why didn't he just? Why didn't Fox pick it up or CW pick it up? But they did. Could have had care. three. I mean, three thing. I mean, I think people would have watched it on CW. Here's the problem: is that as somebody who used to read Hellblazer, which is where he came from, they did a bad job. They didn't actually uh, represent the character correctly at all. However, I overlook it because the actor who plays him is awesome in the role. So I'm going to let it go and say this is an alternate Constantine, as we've already established on the Flash. We've got and Supergirl. We've got all these alternate versions of every character, so I'm just going to accept it for what it is. This is the version of Constantine that we're getting on the TV now. He's very popular. In fact, he's become cultish to where the fans. I were know, like, but he's you know. good. I think to me, I mean, like I say, 
you have you know Ryan Reynolds who played the Green Lantern and they've just pissed off and then he played the um, you know Deadpool, Deadpool with his yeah. mouth put, his mouth sewed shut. I'm like, finally he got it out the one that he wanted to make, Deadpool, made right, people love it. It's the same thing with this. This guy played cars. I mean, he may not be like the, the, the comics, but I, again, you're trying to bring that kind of dark character into a TV show. It's not going to fly with him. But, but you played it like this guy. He was cynical. He, he kept people at bay. He, he was acerbic. I thought, he gra- I thought he was great. I loved him as that character. Did any of you other guys... Actually, are, you, are any of you other guys familiar with Constantine beyond the uh, NBC show and, and the Arrow? No, I mean, I'm, I know about him in the comic books, but I never read it. But I'm I know fam- who he is. Go ahead, Ross. I'm familiar with him from, uh, as most of my DC knowledge, through Injustice. Oh, uh, was he in Injustice? He's in uh, Injustice Year Three. He's kind of he's one of the focal. Oh, characters. the comics. You're not talking yeah. about the game. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Because there are parts of Batman and B Superman that were actually inspired by Injustice. You know which parts I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. And John, what were you saying? I'm sorry. No, just that I know the character from the comics, but I never actually read his comics. But I, Const- I know who he is, yeah. Constantine is part of what they call DC Vertigo. It's an adult version. It's still technically canon as far as connecting the threads, but DC Vertigo is like, they're, they go places like, you know, they, they, they do sex, they do nudity, and they do the stuff that, you know, they, they wouldn't do, be able to get away with in the normal comic. For example, I Zombie. Yeah. And, and I another, Zombie crossover. I want it now. And I Vampire, another one. And another thing, too, is that Constantine was lovers to Zatanna. They were, um, they were what they call, um, oh, what's that word? Um, they were partners in the tantric. Tantric. They were tantric partners. They practiced um, sexual magic rituals together. And obviously, we all know who Zatanna is. She's a major part of the Justice League. She was in Smallville. She's but but her and Constantine. Also, Constantine is a member of what they call Justice League Dark in the New Fifty Two. Justice League Dark is the magical division of the Justice League. It, has, it includes things like Dead Man, Swamp Thing, Zatanna, and a few other people. And they they work on uh, the stuff that is mostly pertaining to the supernatural world of DC. They've talked about doing a, uh, a Justice League Dark TV show. In fact, in one episode of Constantine on NBC, they had the Doctor Fate helmet as a little, uh, you know, a little little Easter egg. So, and Doctor Fate is one of the he's like the Doctor Strange of DC instead of Marvel. So, the, the Constantine has always been part of DC, but the character was not handled correctly on. NBC as far as the fans are concerned um, but good enough to where it still made a lot of people happy sort of like the show at least they let him the smoke. actual fanboys of the comic didn't like him it wasn't but... so much the fanboy thing the character's bisexual they didn't represent that on the show and a lot of fans got offended by that and that I, I have to admit if maybe they just didn't it, give enough time for him to bring that out. I mean, obviously you have to win. You could have, you could have a point a, there. You, a, you could have a point there. I mean, you, you, you come out with a bisexual character in today's climate. You may put, alienate half your half of your customers. You give people time to get used to the character, and then you slowly introduce different aspects of his character. I don't know. I, I have to argue that a little bit. Look at Torchwood with Doctor Who, and, and John, you, you can jump well, in on this yeah, one. Yeah, but Torchwood is English. But they, uh, uh, they uh, right from the day one. Right from the minute right, he was again, introduced, you, but again, he's you like, have a built-in fan bisexual. base with, with Do- Doctor Who. I mean, I, I grew up in England. They've had bisexual characters on TV from the 60s. Are you being served? I mean, they had sexual innuendos from that. You would never get away with that stuff in the 60s in the United States. So they have a it completely de- it different It depends mentality. on the comfort level of the, of the people footing the bill when it comes to these things. American TV is like, they, 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 um, they'll cancel the show if the, if the, if the uh, shareholders... Look, look at the show Birds of Prey that used to be on the WB. I used to love that show. It was very good, though. Yeah, but I, know, I didn't really like that show. But yeah, but they, they're so quick to say, oh, we're getting rid of it because the rating... I agree. I, I, I agree that the companies are too quick to pull a plug on shows. I mean, you look at all of the great shows that could have been but didn't get the audience. Firefly. And they pulled Firefly is a prime example. Yeah, and that's, why, that's another reason why people keep saying, you need to check out Gotham. You just when you mention Firefly, that's that's my whole point. Fox, when you when you look at certain companies, and it's like, you know, everybody keeps telling me you need to watch what Gotham, and I keep telling them only if it makes it to the end episode where they decide it's actually a finished show, 
not because it gets pulled on the plug gets pulled prematurely. Well, they're go- they've got it got renewed, so they're going into the third season. So. Uh, it still doesn't make me comfortable. Did. Okay, so are you saying you're not going to watch any of these series just in case they get canceled? For Fox, the answer is yes. Uh, and that's because okay, of my experience Fox. with Birds of Prey and other shows. Fox has a history of you get sucked in, you really want to get into it, and boom, they get rid of it. Because all you, they, they all, did, all you I need guess, is one bad episode, and they'll get rid of it. I, I, again, I, I agree. With you. They had that show about the, uh, the the cop, you know, Doctor Doctor uh, McCoy, who plays you know in the Star Wars Star Trek movies. Ken Urban. He was a cop. Yeah, oh, almost mean, human. I'm almost. Yeah, human. I love that show. Yeah, I love well, that they show. And they pulled it after one season. Yeah. Yep, exactly. I was like, that was a great cop show. Well, it was actually the American version of an English show. That, it, that was kind of I weird. I know, but I mean, they, but it was still well acted. You're See, thinking John's, of being human. Being human, yeah. Being human, I'm sorry, yeah, John, being But human. John, you're... you're no, you're, Almost you're, Human is the show he's talking about. George, you're thinking about being human, which is yeah, completely yeah. different. Oh, yeah. yeah. But when I, when I when John asked the question, are you gonna are you going to judge the show by with the fear of it being canceled? When it comes to Fox, yes. If it was anybody else, I would say no. But because it's Fox, I'm going to say yes. That's there's a reason why I'm saying that. Right, but you know that you do that, then you are taking. I mean, there could be many people that do that, and then the show will not get picked up because it doesn't have the audience. And if you, you know what? Tune in from. You know what? Somebody else argued that the other day. They said, "Well, if you would give in, if you would watch it, the ratings would support." Yeah, okay. That's like saying, uh, "If you want a good president, you have to make sure that you vote." You vote. Uh, it, I don't buy that for a minute. The thing is, is that. <laughs> Come on. You've got to participate. No, you, you don't. You've got to sit on the sideline. Really, I don't want to be teased. Look, if you don't vote, then I'm sorry. You get lumped in with whatever person gets in there. If You, you also for, have no right guy, to bitch. You, yeah, you're I mean, right. You, you're you right. don't have the right to bitch. I'm sorry. I, you don't have – if you don't vote or you don't watch, then you don't have I'm the right to I'm not saying I'm complain. not going to vote. I'm just saying that, like, I don't, I don't subscribe to the theory that if you – let's say you have three, you know – Oh, this is. I'm, we're getting sidetracked a little bit, but I will jump into it just a little bit. Let's say we have three bad presidents. They're all horrible, which we do right now. We have bad choices, all of them. So let's just say I vote for I don't know Donald Trump. I'm not going to, but I'm just saying, if I do it just because I don't want Bernie or Hillary to be elected, and I am participating, like you say, I'm still creating a problem because I'm. What are the? I don't know whether or not my vote me, made all the difference between. The lesser of the three evils. George, so, it's called a write-in ballot. Vote for whomever you want. I know. You don't have None to of vote for a Democrat. You don't yes. have to vote for a, a Republican. There but, are other choices. Vote I, for yourself. I know. I, I, I'm just saying that when it comes to the shows, though, with Fox, as a network, Fox has pulled the plug in the middle of nowhere when they have when, when they what, what I ha, what I call one bad day. You have one bad day. You have, you have ratings going down because of whatever reason. ABC, NBC, they've actually had a lot more faith in their shows to say, all right, you've had we, the shareholders. They're getting nervous because they're worried that their money's going to get screwed over. And and so, it, you know, if it was Fox, they'd be like, okay, the show's gone. Even though it might have a cult following, the show's gone because, oh, you guys are nervous? I'm so sorry. I guess we'll get rid of it. Fox does that so many times with so many shows. They have a history. And you know that old saying that Scotty well, said on Star Trek? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Uh, George, fool me 52 it, times. George, <laughs> if, if, if the thing is that you're so pissed off with Fox is, but they obviously have the shows that you want to watch. No, they don't. If you're that pissed – well, then why are you so pissed? If they only have I don't, a few, they, and Right now, would they you have care? nothing I want to watch except Lucifer. Then again. Okay, I mean, they obviously have had something. I mean, to me, ABC, NBC, and CBS, especially CBS, that's I, I can't watch CBS. Uh, there's nothing on that. TV, Supergirl. That network. Well, see, Supergirl is <laughs> it. That's about it. Star Trek comes soon. But I mean, I don't watch the NCISs. I don't watch the uh, all that other crap. I, I, the you know the 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 the, the survivors things or whatever it is. I don't watch the stuff on NBC, The Voice. I don't watch. Now they're finally getting rid of the uh, American Idol, thank God, because I, I I don't watch any of that crap. So I mean, to me, I I, I if it's something I want to watch, if it's interesting, and they take it, yeah, I'm pissed. But I mean, at least I got to watch a little bit of it. That doesn't make me happy. If they get rid of it when I'm getting hooked. That makes me more angry. That's like in the. That's like getting cock blocked, quite frankly. You don't get that angry. I mean, okay, 
I they can take it away, but then there are other things that cannot, you know, you write in a letter or you su- su- submit a form and whatever. I mean, you just Which means nothing, because little... they don't bring them back. But then, yeah, but they, again, but you, then you just move on. I mean, Dude, you if you, don't, if you, I don't you, get that invested. I don't get that invested. Right now, yes, let's just I say I start that watching took... Gotham, all right? And, like, they're, they're getting, like, ready to make a big reveal or something cool. And I'm actually getting, like, all excited, and I'm starting to post about it on Facebook. And all of a sudden... Gotham is not coming back. I'm gonna, you know, that's that, but but they've done it so much. I'm sorry, you know, that's the whole. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm Anthony's waiting for Flash, and he and he, and he disappeared. Uh, Anthony's waiting for Flash. I'm waiting for Gotham to pretty much wrap up so that I can say, okay, I will go back and watch that based on the fact that they reached their conclusion. They 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 finished their story that they intended to tell. But if I'm going to get the plug pulled in the middle of the whole, what the writers wanted to do, that's going to frustrate me. Well, you shouldn't let things frustrate you that bad, George. Well, <laughs> I'm wasting my time. Have you uh, met George? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I'm watching the show. I don't know. What happens if they pull Supergirl tomorrow? I don't think uh, they're going to. Has it to, been renewed? I mean, they came out, CBS came out actually, with a bunch of Actually, it's funny you mention that. Uh, my theory is it's going to the all-access streaming channel because the show is so... what are you so... going to do then, George? Pay. Not me. Yeah, you are going to pay for it? No, I'll probably torrent it. I'm probably going to pirate it. I'm not paying it. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not paying that, that CBS crap. If they put Star Trek on CBS, that whole lot, I'm not paying that either. So they they, they are. It's the flagship show for CBS yeah, All they, Access. You're gonna have to pay for Star Trek. I'm sorry, I'm not paying it. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Well, that's pay your for choice. That. That's your choice. Yeah, exactly. That's my choice. I think they're gonna get a lot of complaints about that because it's every, it's the though, future I'm of sure TV though. The, the first episode for free on they regular are. TV get millions of people to watch and say, "Look, you have to buy it on CBS All Access." And yeah, but you could say no. Yeah, but John, you know what though? The thing is, is that um, uh, the thing about st- the, the streaming network. A few years ago, Matt Lauer on the Today Show predicted uh, there, there was some people that had a discussion, and they said like it was like five, like six or seven years ago, they predicted that by the year two thousand twenty, and we're getting pretty close to that, uh, that we would have a all streaming, no more TV the way that we know it, and they're right. So far, it's all happening exactly the way they predicted, and. To be honest with you, it actually saves you more money. Uh, Terry Lynn Shaw, who Ross knows, and I think you do too, Will, um, she predicted that um, if you actually look at the amount you're spending, if you if you if you pay a hundred and something dollars for cable, for example, and you're getting like uh, seven hundred channels, you may only watch five of those channels. You're wasting all this money on shows that you don't watch. If you pay for, right, but how much? How much? Much is that going to be? I mean, you've got Netflix, which was ten $99. shows. You get 10, 10, I'm sorry, 10 networks for the price that you would pay for normal cable. So you I mean, get is, C- it just C- is CBS is all access? Is it just for CBS, right? Right. It's, okay. So how much so is that? Got, how much do they cost? Five, oh, six, or, five or six bucks a month, a month. Okay, so if you pick, say, CBS, and BBC is doing this too for Doctor Who going forward. If you pick, say, Doctor Who and CBS and all these other Doctor ones. Doctor Who's on Amazon, George. For, Amazon the, for the past shows, not the future. Pay, that's important. They're not doing it for the new stuff coming out. That's something. That I'm sorry. People... The thing. I just want one package: Netflix, Amazon. Put everything together. Let me pay ten bucks a month, fifteen bucks a month. The doctor. I don't want to pay five ninety nine here, five ninety nine there, five ninety nine there. If you add it all up, though, well, it's going to be about the same price as you're paying right now. But you're going to be more able to control what you want to see. It's but about. But you still roughly... have. I mean... Go ahead. I mean. But you, I mean, you got local channels. You've got all the the you know the the, the I like I I watch Smithsonian, which I mean you get free over the internet as long as you can. It's a work get access to your You cable. do have a good point. You got ne, ne, uh, you know National Geo and stuff like that. I mean, those are the channels that I watch a lot of mornings and evenings and so forth. But I mean that to me, I just want something like a, that's why cable or satellite is easy because it's just one one location. If they're going to start splitting it up, each each company now has their own internet access. That's why I like Netflix. Put it all on Netflix. Let me pay ten bucks a month. Boom! I'm I'm done with it. But then Netflix it's, is getting all the money, and the studios aren't getting as right, much but as they, they want. They have to it's going to become a monopoly. Some kind of distribution process. It's going to become a monopoly if that happens. Sort of like what happens with. Uh, and John, you'll pre- maybe appreciate this analogy. It's sort of what's happening with Daz. They're trying to absorb every 
the conglomeration of, of okay, you don't, you don't, you don't, the okay, industry. Netflix, monopolies, but Netflix is actually losing about uh, in the last few years. It's lost about a third of its library because other companies are starting their own streaming services. Like Hulu, you mean? Yeah. Well, Hulu, Amazon, no, like, every like network CBS. has their own streaming app that they're trying to get their content exclusively released on. It's a work in progress. It's not going to be perfect, but I think that at the end of the day, when the dust clears, that we're going to have um, more control over over what we want to watch. I mean, there, and some other service might come out in ten years that even is more mi- microscopically uh, controlling of what you want to see. And it maybe we'll make. Why can't I just pay for? Can I just pay like uh, ninety nine cents or one dollar ninety nine cents for each episode I want to watch? You can I, on you, on services on like Google Play. Yeah, and YouTube. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, YouTube uh, Red. A, a lot yeah. of these things are just obscure, or you don't. I don't mind I mean, Google Play. What you're talking about that Google. service on Google is actually part of what's on. I mean, sorry, on YouTube, it's what's owned by uh, a portion of Google. So in a way, it's kind of the same uh, service. It's interesting stuff. I mean, we could talk about this all day. I mean, I really think that it's talking about the streaming service. We should make a whole show about that. But I think we should start to wind down a little bit. Is there anything you guys want to talk about before yeah, we wrap I up? Actually, yeah, I actually, yeah, actually have to be going. Also, yeah, I, it's fun. Hey, yeah. you know what? I think it was an interesting discussion. John, thank you once again for joining us. I hope yes, you join us so, in the future. Thank you guys. Yeah, join you next time. All right. Time. Anybody else uh, want to talk about anything before we go? I have one thing. Sure. Uh, in the future, you'll be seeing a release of the spoiler cast for Batman v Superman. But I read an article today that I wanted to share. Okay. So, All right. Well, I'm just probably the say, number uh, one. Okay, bat- I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. Have a good night, and I'll catch up with you guys. Yeah, it's later. fine that you have to go, John. Thank you very See much. You, John. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, John. Okay. Bye. Talk later. So, one of the number one Batman fanboys out there, Kevin Smith. Yeah, I love Kevin. Has Smith. come out saying that he's not the biggest fan of Batman mm-hmm. versus Superman. Really? Because considering Ben is his friend there, and he oh, he loves Ben in it. He abs- he's a he adores Ben's performance. I mean, naturally, okay. Kevin Smith gave Ben Affleck one of his first major acting gigs. Yeah, but he's not as big a fan of Zack Snyder's uh, Batman v Superman. I'm looking forward to checking out his Batman, uh, uh, Fat Man on Batman podcast. I love that show. He's definitely probably going to have a lot of things to say. Go ahead. What, were you, what did he say? No, I, 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 uh, that's just the general of idea Very of what was in the article. I, I'm not going to repeat the whole thing verbatim. And for fans that don't, or viewers, that, listeners that don't know, Kevin Smith is in the, has been, he just wrapped up um, directing an episode of The Flash. He loves the show. Well, it's very popular. I mean, The yeah. Flash is very popular. He's even more popular than well, the Well, he asked he was to direct it, which was off. interesting. And they said, okay. And he, and he ended up doing it. That's what, That was the unusual part. He was so emotional. He did a camera reaction of one of the episodes where he started crying at the season finale for the se- season one finale. And then he put out a tweet, I would love to direct an episode. And then the CW came back and said, okay. And the next thing you know, he's doing it. It was awesome. I gotta go, guys. I'll see you guys later. All right. All right. Well, I guess that'll wrap up this episode because we've pretty much had everybody have to go. So yeah, it's just us. you and me now. <laughs> it's okay though. We kind of went longer than usual in this episode, but I was hey, it was interesting stuff. So we will talk to everybody next time, and hope everybody has a good night. Good night. Take.